So let's talk a little bit about transportation issues as it relates to all 87 counties. Uh, there have been transportation issues that have been much in the news lately. Some of them concern um, light rail transit. Uh, uh, the uh, Southwest light rail transit line has been very much in the news. But of course, uh, we also have uh, transportation issues that affect greater Minnesota as well. And so let's start, uh, Representative Marquardt, with you. Maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about transportation issues uh, and uh, uh, to the extent that you you have some thoughts about the Southwest line, perhaps we can include those as well. The, the floor is yours. You know, the transportation issue is huge. And of course, you know, in rural Minnesota and around the state, and I think MnDOT says we need uh, about $600 million of new revenue a year just to maintain our current roads and bridges. So, you know, how do we, how do we get there? Now, uh, the, money we're getting on the infrastructure from the feds is quite significant. I mean, literally billions of dollars, like five years worth of what we receive uh, in our gas tax, uh, be about five years of that that we're getting. I mean, it's a very significant amount, but we've never politically been able to come up with a way to really pay for it ongoing. So uh, if you're a Democrat, you would support a gas tax increase. If you're a Republican, you support increasing the general fund, <laughs> which we have done. And and so we never seem to get uh, kind of a combination. I, I think the best way to do that uh, would be a combination, but it's not gonna happen politically. And I wouldn't support it unless there was a buy-in uh, by both sides. But to get the 600 million, you could do 200 million in a gas tax, which would be six or seven cents increase. That's a user tax. And what folks don't realize is that even though on the gas tax, uh, rural Minnesota pays about 50% of it, they get back about 70% under the formula, a constitutional formula that says it can only go for roads, can't go for light rail or anything else. So it's a user tax. And then take 200 out of the general fund, which the Republicans support, and maybe bond for 200 million. So you got people together and you could come up with the 600 million. Now, I wouldn't propose that unless all both sides got together on that. Otherwise, it's no good at all. My parents got married in 1935 during the Great Depression. And I went back and looked at stats as to what we paid in the gas tax as for your income, your family income, they were paying about three or four times more of their income in a gas tax back then uh, than we are now. So we certainly haven't kept up with the burden, but my parents understood the importance of paying into an infrastructure system and how that would benefit their children and grandchildren, and great-grandchildren down the line. So uh, until we can you know, kind of get past the ideological barriers, which we have, that neither side can cross. Um, we're just gonna kind of try to piece things together through bonding bills and whatever, but we haven't really come up with a good permanent way uh, to fund our education or our transportation needs in the future. And that's unfortunate. I, I hope someday we can get there. And I'll leave others to talk about light rail. <laughs> Representative Miller, your thoughts. Oh, sure. Thanks for handing that one off, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, Representative Mark. Representative Miller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, um, I'm trying to get into the conversation here because I know that's what people want to hear, but you keep throwing issues at me that I kind of say, well, here's where I stand on it. So uh, one comment real quick on the gas tax. The, the challenge, I don't really completely disagree with Representative Marquardt. But the problem is, is yeah, there is kind of the ide ideological divide on the gas tax. But one of the challenges is too, is consistently uh, people are telling us they don't want us to increase the gas tax. We, we kind of serve it to them in different ways and we can kind of get a little bit of buy-in, but when it really comes down to it, they don't support that. And that's, that's quite frankly a problem if you're doing something that people don't want to do. Now they want the money spent on roads. So how you make that connection, I don't know. Now on the light rail, um, I'm in rural Minnesota, so just like uh, Senator Friends, not really having to worry too much about um, wolves, I don't have to worry too much about light rail out in Princeburg, Minnesota, but I do have to concern myself with the sheer cost of it. And it, it's just frankly, you, you have to, you know, there, the, 
you can't always go just dollar for dollar whether this is an investment you, you know you, you put some intangibles in there as to what the value is and the big figure picture something like that but in order to justify the incredible cost not only for the construction but for the operational light rail you really have to stretch far the intangibles that are there it is so expensive so expensive per rider it's so expensive per per mile that you're doing it when you compare it to other modes of transportation and it just seems like we've become a state that's become infatuated with something just just simply is not the right fit for our state and yet we keep pressing forward with it so i i, I wish we would just stop but Every time I say stop, we just seem to keep expanding this because I, I believe that one of the things that we also did, and it isn't light rail, but now we have the train line that's going up to Duluth or at least the beginnings of that, which is just uh, makes no sense to me. Senator Friends, transportation. Well, I'll take the uh, light rail part of it first. You know, I'm a believer in mass transit. I think it saves us money. I served on the Senate Transportation Committee and the public uh, share of the transportation on light rail when it's at its normal ridership is actually pretty low. We had, I think, 225,000 riders for the week of the Super Bowl. And I think we can all see that with electricity, uh, you know, it's operated at a, at a very economical rate. So I like that. But there's another lesson in there. And legislators that succeed, in my opinion, are listening to the public. There were members of the public that raised these concerns about Southwest Light Rail and the progress of the construction that were, I don't know, I don't want to say they were ignored, but those problems are now back. And some of the neighbors uh, that were concerned are now saying, I told you so. And those are leading to cost overruns. I know private companies have these kinds of problems. My grandfather used to talk about the Edsel is not working out exactly like Ford Motor Company wanted it. That's a different Zoom call. Um, but I think you want to listen to the public at all stages of these huge projects. To the question of stable ongoing funding, I came in as, as a supporter of the gas tax and as a greater Minnesota legislator, I thought that was the smarter way because then you got the stable long-term funding that would allow the county engineers, MnDOT, to make some plans out over several years. I still think stable long-term funding has eluded us, but I will admit this, with the sort of one-time money that we've put into it in bonding, with the money coming from the feds, it's fair to say we have some money now in the short term to Representative Marquardt's point, maybe we can find a solution. Again, I think it's gotta be something everyone buys into. I don't see just sort of jamming something through with a thin margin. Our transportation needs are too important not to find a little piece in the valley. I hope we do. Senator Ingebrigtsen? Uh, yeah, the, the light rail, I think, has uh, been pounded on a little bit here. Of course, being a rural legislator, I'm not in favor of that at all. And I, I, my 16 years, going on 16 years down there, sit right next to the light rail where I live, and, and I, I see the ridership there, and, and it's just not there. I mean, it just isn't. Now, it's the end of the rail. I'll give, I'll give you that. I understand it gets busier down towards the university. But nevertheless, uh, uh, for years there, they weren't charging. You were on your honor to charge or to, to actual pay. Uh, you can't run a, you can't run a, expect to run a business like that and make it work. So it it just seems to be a a, a big money money hole that that never ends. And and uh, as Senator Friend said, I, I think listen to the folks. There's no question about that. Start listening to the people down there. Push comes to shove. If we decide to buy, build something, or or I should say, they the seven county metro decides to build something, they can go ahead and pay for it. I uh, I really don't feel that I would support anything out here. With regards to that, with regards to the gas tax, uh, Governor Walls came in with a 20, 20 cent, uh, you know, a gallon gas tax. That was like 76 percent increase. That didn't hit hit over too well, especially when we had when we had enough money in the coffers. In fact, last year in the last budget cycle, uh, we put out the biggest uh, transportation bill in the history of Minnesota. Uh, so uh, we've been we've been paying attention to tra to transportation and. Uh, uh, I think the cost of fuel is, is a huge driver of, of uh, concern for especially rural Minnesota where they have to drive so far to the jobs or drive so far to, to school and whatnot. Uh, uh, now I just see it go up another 10 cents a gallon, you know, just at a blink of an eye goes up another 10 cents a gallon. So I think this isn't only just a state issue, it's certainly been a federal issue. Uh, 
uh, with the pipeline uh, situation that's going on and what's going on in Russia is, is affecting us all. And and uh, I don't think the states uh, are, are doing, at least Minnesota is not doing a very bad bad job. But that federal money we talk about, that endless amount of money that's shaking out of the tree coming from Washington, D.C. is is uh, kind of interesting. Let's never forget that's going to have to be, either be paid back uh, by either us, and I don't think that's going to happen in our lifetime. It's going to be our kids. So we've got to be real careful of just spending federal money just because it shows up. But unfortunately, that's what's going on. Mm-hmm.